Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Juan Ross. Today we have goalkeeper for New York Red Bulls 2, Rashid Nuhu. Rashid, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing good. Well, uh, I really want to thank you, Rashid, obviously, for doing this for my channel. And uh, and thank you so much for taking your time out of your day. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be doing it, you know. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate it. To start off, Rashid, if you could talk to us about your, your upbringing in, in Accra. In Ghana, how how was that? You know, obviously, being in Africa, not being in, in the United States, how was that? Um, growing up, um, I was with my brother, and I was um, was just my mom. My dad passed away when I was like four, wow. so I didn't really have like a dad figure. So it was tough for my mom just like take care of both me and my brother. Mm -hmm. But I mean, she was able to do it and we knew what she was going through too so we had to step up as young age to do something that could also like make it easy on her mm -hmm. which is to play football yeah. i mean soccer so that's what we both did and we both went to the same soccer academy the right to dream academy mm. and from there I, I ended up coming to the u.s for school and all that and now playing yeah Mm -hmm, for sure. What do you miss most about Ghana, obviously, in, in Accra? What do you miss the most? Uh, I mean, obviously, I miss, like, the food. Yeah. Um, definitely, like, my friends, my mm -hmm. home. Because, like, I mean, I grew up playing on the streets with them, like, very close. And mm -hmm. coming to, like, overseas and, like, not having them here is kind of, like, was tough, like, at yeah. the beginning. But, like, with time, it got easier and, like... With time, so I, I like I stay connected with them, like mm -hmm. talking with them every day, which was good. So, yeah. and, and I'm imagining now FaceTime and Messenger helps out a lot too, right? To 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 talk to to your relatives face yeah, to face, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. And then obviously, do you think your upbringing in Ghana has shaped you into the man you are today? For sure, yeah. I like <laughs> it's funny because at young age, I already learned how to live by myself. Mm -hmm. Was, um, I had to leave, like, leave my home and go to the right to do my academy at the age of 11. Wow. So I was like, I mean, it was tough for my mom. Like, she didn't want me going. Mm -hmm. But then I loved to play, like, soccer. So I was like, it's something I want to do. So, like, then, like, we talked about it because she wanted me to go to school. So, like, she didn't know, like, the right to do my academy was also, like, keen on education, too. Yeah. So, like, sitting down with, like, the right to bring people and, like, talking about it, she, like, she came to agree with what, like, the academy was all about. Mm -hmm. And she let me leave, which I was happy about. Even though it was tough for me because I was 11, I didn't know how to live on my own, like, how to just be up by myself. Yeah. It was tough, but when I went through that, it made, it, like, it made things easier for me in life now. Like, coming to high school, going to a boarding school. Yeah. I was, I was like, uh, like I've been through this already at a young age, so like this shouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. Which like my friends in school who were like twenty minutes from home were like getting homesick or that, and I was like, "You're fifteen now. Yeah. What are you talking about? Like, I left home when I was eleven. Like, you should be okay. You twenty minutes from home too. Like, this should be a problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I think like growing up in Ghana, like what I went through really shaped me to be. Who I am today for sure and if I'm not wrong Rashid is is, is there a dream academy is that where Joshua Yaro came from Emmanuel Boateng like all the yeah. like um the Ghana name players that are coming to the MLS correct yes that's correct wow, we okay. all play together yeah so, so I'm guessing you have connection with, with all of them correct oh yeah I talk to them all the time yeah oh, that's good that's good uh, obviously if if you could talk to us about your favorite song and and and, and food like your favorite artist Honestly, right now my favorite artist is Young Thug. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. Like I listen to his songs every day. Like, yeah. <laughs> for sure. And my favorite food is jollof. It's a Ghanaian dish. Okay. It's like rice with like sauce, like mixed together with like meat. Mm -hmm. It's really good. I think you should try it. You'll love it. For sure. I I I I should try. I mean, I'm I'm here in Bakersfield, so I don't think there's. There's a place that makes it, but hopefully soon. Do you uh, do you cook it? Do you make it? Um, I've tried it this year. I've tried it since like I'm like I'm in playing professional now. Like I yeah. live like by myself. I have to like 
make myself like food so like i, I did try it yeah i mean it doesn't taste as good as like my mom's or like you know yeah, yeah. But, Still, still good <laughs> for sure a playlist yeah. before a game to get you pumped up to get you ready for the game something um before games i just like to relax like first of all when i wake up i like to like eat good breakfast mm -hmm. and like relax like listening to music loud just yeah. like <laughs> just like being a zone just like think about how the game like how i think like i should play in the game like, yeah just visualize like things I want to do good in the mm -hmm. game. Yeah. And when I go to the locker room, I just try to have like my headphones on, like try to stay away from any like distractions and just like be in the zone until mm -hmm. game time. Yeah. For sure. Most embarrassing song on your phone, if you have one? I don't think I have one. Nah. <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. For sure. Um, s s something that we do that that us the fans don't know about Rashid Nuhu. Something interesting that that we probably wouldn't know about you. Well, I don't know. Like it's not probably not even about me, but like most people didn't know my brother signed with Manchester City when he was like nineteen, oh, which wow. is something like people never knew. Like no one knows about. Uh huh. And, and it's like mm -hmm. it's just something like. I don't know, like, people will be like, oh, do you have a brother? I'm like, yeah, like, my older brother, like, does he play soccer? I'm like, yeah, he actually got signed by Man City. And we're like, oh, what? Like, <laughs> like, yeah, like. Was there an opportunity for your brother with Manchester City? Because of, um, yeah, was there an opportunity? Well, like, he got signed, and, you know, that's when, like, City started becoming big. Uh -huh. And, like, you got loaned out to, like, teams from Norway, like, this kind of Scandinavian teams and stuff like that. Yeah. And he got to a point that he realized, like, it wouldn't be a good move for him because he, he would never play with them. Mm -hmm. So then he just didn't sign with them anymore and just went on his own. Went on his own. Yeah. For sure. If Rashid knew who wouldn't to be a professional soccer player, what would your profession be? <sighs> That's a tough one. <laughs> Honestly, growing up, um, before I even got interested in soccer, I wanted to be a teacher. Wow, okay. Any specific yeah, reason? I really, I don't know. Um, because my grandma was a teacher and I really admired her. And I, whenever like, she goes to school, she always drags me to school. Yeah. That's when like I became like really street because because like, my grandma was a teacher. Like She takes me to school, like, helps me with my homework, everything like that. So yeah. like... That's when I fell in love with being a teacher, but then wow. started playing soccer, and I was like, that's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And if I'm not wrong, you're 23, you're, you're about to turn 24 in December, but what are your short and long-term goals for your career? Um, Right now, like, I mean, this past season was my first year playing pro, mm -hmm. and it didn't go as well as I wanted it to go. Mm -hmm. I really like wanted to get like more playing time and develop like myself as a player. Yeah, we didn't really happen. Yes, I mean, if, even though I didn't play much games, I still feel like I've developed just like being in a pro environment, like training day in day out. You know. Yeah. But right now, my next goal is to like play like more games and you know like. As a soccer player, or like any like um, athlete, like if you're not playing in like tough situations, you you know you don't see yourself growing. Exactly. So I really want to be in a situation where I can grow mm -hmm. and just become better. And I mean, my long term goal is just stay healthy and stay in the game. Like I don't I don't want to like I don't want something to happen and I would look back and be like. Damn, like, I wish I did that. I wish I did this, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, my long-term goal is just to stay in the game as long as I can, and hopefully some bigger, thing, bigger things happen, you know? Yeah, for sure. Most definitely. And, and I wish you the best of luck in all your goals that you want to accomplish. And obviously, as a goalkeeper, Rashid, I'm imagining that the, the you watch, you know, Ghanaian goalkeepers. But in your opinion, who do you think is the best goalkeeper in Ghana history? Obviously, re regarding soccer. In Ghana history, 
I think I'll go with Richard Kingston. Richard Kingston? Uh, yeah, I don't know if you know who he is. I've heard of him, yeah. Yeah, he, he really stood up um, in the 2006 and 2010 World Cups. Mm -hmm. And like, he really stood up for Ghana, like, even though people are criticizing him, like, yeah. being like small size and all that. But like, he, he really like stepped up and mm -hmm. helped, it, helped his own for Ghana. So it was good. Yeah, for sure. And then you obviously come to United States. If you could talk to us about, you know, the transition, obviously going from Africa to 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 the U.S. You know, to, uh, uh, maybe a different language. You know, a lot of different. It's a, a di culture shock. You know, and it's just different. But if you could talk to us about that, how was that? Was it difficult? Um, honestly, I didn't really find it like that much like difficult because um, the Right to Dream Academy. We had like staff from like England and wow. some from the US. Okay. Who were like, like whenever like we come in here to the US for like school and all that, like mm -hmm. they try to like keep us like knowledge of like about things mm -hmm. around here, like how things go around and like we see them all the time, like, so that we know like how they do things and like things we shouldn't say, things we shouldn't do, like yeah. we see all that at the academy, so like. Coming here wasn't that big of a change. So it prepared you well. Yeah, yeah, they definitely prepare as well. And like, I mean, the only biggest issue was just like being away from home. You know, that was the only big issue. Yeah, homesick. Was like, yeah, and just getting homesick and like not having a real family here, like just to talk to. You know, yeah, it was different. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was the only biggest problem. But but now, but now it's good because now you're a professional. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And then you spent four years at Fordham, uh, Fordham University. But if you could talk to us about the difference between the collegiate level and now professionally, is there is there a huge difference or no? Yeah, it's, it's a big difference, honestly. Because <laughs> like, I mean, when I was in college, I was like, I was, I mean, I was pretty good. I mean, for my like school and um, for my conference. Yeah. Then like moving from college to like my first day of like training with the New York Red Bulls like first team, mm -hmm. and that was I was still even at Fordham. It was like it was in the summer, and they like called me to train with them. Yeah, and like I saw the level, and I was like, we are like joking in college, like yeah. the level is so high in the pros, and that's like right now I look back at college, and I'm like. I'm glad I actually like, made it this far to mm -hmm. like, experience something this like good and not thinking like college is like the highest level. Like yeah. most people in college think it's like D1 is like the highest thing they can ever do. Yeah. So they go to the next level and they're like, oh, we're joking. Because mm -hmm. like, I mean, like, I, I, I feel like college like was too slow. Like, yeah. like everything was just like, <laughs> That you have so much time in college to do like whatever you want on the ball, like you have like you have so much time to think everything. Like mm -hmm. the pros, just like everything just goes too quick. Yeah, yeah. Like even this, like this, the college season, like season is short, uh -huh. and like you come to the pros, and it's like the pros like a year like long. Yeah, but it goes quick. Mm -hmm. and, like you realize, like damn, like. Like, if you really, like, didn't come up, like, ready for the season, like, prepared to, like, play and do good, mm -hmm. like, the blink of your eye and the season is over and you didn't gone. gain anything. Mm -hmm. So, like, even though, like, people think college season is short, like, the, the pros, like, it goes quick, too, like, because it's your job, you go in every day, like, yeah. it goes quick. Mm -hmm. So, it's, like, it's different, like, big difference from college. For sure. If if you were to go to the beginning of the season, what would you have told yourself to prepare for your first professional year with the Red Bulls? Is there anything in particular that you would have wanted to know or, or something to prepare you for the professional level? Um, honestly, I would have just having like better training in college. Mm -hmm. Just having better training in college would have definitely prepared me better for the pros. Yeah. Cause like the way the college system set up, you barely even train. Just uh -huh. like game after game after game, so you don't really see yourself like training and like 
like correcting your mistakes, learning. Like you don't see yourself doing those things. Yeah. But it's just game after game. And you, like you go through a lot. Like sometimes, like you have like injuries, and you be fighting through it for like the seasons or like three months. And yeah. It's just tough. Like so. Yeah. I mean, I wish I had better training before going pro. And, yeah. Yeah. For sure. What did you do with your first check from Red Bulls? Do you remember when you first got it? Was there anything in particular that, that you know that that you bought with it? <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I mean I bought, I bought a TV. Okay. Was it <laughs> huge? The first thing I did. Uh, it's a fifty-five inch TV. Huh? Pretty big. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty big. So yeah. Most definitely. Favorite teammate <laughs> so far with Red Bulls? Maybe Evan Loro, the goalkeeper. Maybe. <laughs> What is your favorite what? F favorite teammate so far? Maybe in collegiate level or or now or now with Red Bulls? Any anything like camaraderie, going traveling and being in hotels? Um, I mean like one of uh, my teammates from Fordham, Janusz Lubo, he also got drafted to Red Bulls. Okay. And like whenever we travel, like we were like roommates and everything. Like, even like at the house here, I mean New Jersey, we roommates too. So it's like. We've been from Fordham to here, and like you know, it's just the same thing. Like, yeah. yeah. Started from the bottom, and now you're a professional, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. And and then obviously, as a goalkeeper, you encounter various and different le lethal forwards. Is there any forward in particular that that you know that that took you a long time? No, not a long time, but it it took you to possibly to save them or or didn't know how to come out and approach someone to get out of your box and. It, any hard forward? Um, I would say um, Bradley Red Phillips. Oof, yeah. He <laughs> he's a fucking. I'm um, sorry for my language, no, but like, <laughs> he's, he's just amazing. Like he's an animal. He's like he would just score a goal on you, and you just look back and like right, like whatever is Brad, like you know. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah, it's whatever is Brad, like yeah. He, he's always hitting the target like he doesn't really focus on power he's just going for the corners and he's just so nice. like you just know like he's someone who's like really talented someone who's been in the league for a long time yeah. experience like mm -hmm. he knows what he's doing yeah so, yeah it was i mean it was tough like yeah like always like training with him and like just like i mean he definitely got me better but mm -hmm. I hate playing against them. That's it. <laughs> For sure. And then I'm, yeah. I'm imagining that you had a chance to, to train with the first team. And if that was the case, how was that? Was there a big difference between the first team and second team? Uh, yeah, obviously, um, there's a big difference from the first team and second team. And yeah, yeah I, did, I did go to preseason with the first team. So mm -hmm. I was with them for a while. Then I finally signed with the second team, mm -hmm. and even though I signed with the second team, I was still like training both, like with both teams. And yeah, I mean the level is, is yeah, it's, it's a, a big step up. Even yeah. from like let's say from college to the second team, it's a big step up, and from the second team to the first team, it's even bigger step up. Like so, like yeah, it's all like it's all like just like a step, like moving forward. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Is our are there certain things that you've probably learned from from Luis Robles? Obviously, uh, a goalkeeper that's consolidated himself in the MLS and one of the best as well in the MLS. Have ha, have you picked out certain things from him? Yeah, like he like I don't even know where to start because <laughs> like he knew the situation I was in. Wow! And the first like week or so of training, he came up to me as like he's been there. Mm -hmm. When he started playing pro, he was in Germany playing for like third division team, mm -hmm. and he never got games for like wow. like two years or something. So like he he knew like what I was going through, and he was like try to guide me through it. Just like keep working hard, like just come up, do extra stuff with the coaches, get help, get better. Yeah. When when your chance comes, you're, like you're ready to take it. Mm -hmm. And like that's something like I've really like taken from him. Not even not even just playing, just like him, just like talking to me. Like yeah, it made me feel better. Like mm -hmm. and just like training with him. Also, like honestly, when I was in college, I thought like I mean I thought I was alright. So mm -hmm. like I was playing, like training with him, and I was like 
I'm terrible. Like, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like, he made me look, like, terrible. Like, yeah. And, like, day in, day out, just training with him. Like, I also started, like, learning from him. Like, it's, it's always like that. Like, training with people who are, like, much better than you. Like, it helps you. It puts, yeah, it helps you. Like, you get, like, better technique with them. Like, you try to keep up with the pace that they're training in and all yeah. that. So, it was definitely, like, a great experience for me to, like, train with such a, like, an unbelievable goalie, like, yeah. in the league. Like, honestly, to me, he's, like, the best goalie in the league. Like, yeah. he's definitely, like, underrated in the league, which is, like, unbelievable. Like, you see the saves he makes in games. Like, yeah. it's just... They're insane. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And obviously, you're a goalkeeper. Is there who do you think is the best goalkeeper right now in in in, in the world? <sighs> tough one, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's, that's a tough one. But hmm. Uh, maybe I'm a Man City fan, but like Ederson. I'm, 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 I'm not gonna say Ederson. I mean, he's good, but. I don't think he's the best in the world. Mm-hmm. I'll definitely go with Oblak. Not even Ter Stegen. Ter Stegen is good too, but you know, Oblak, I don't know. Man. Like, it's tough. It's also like, you know, like I like I like those goalies who are like underrated and like, you know, they're good. Like, yeah, people, yeah. like if Ter Stegen wasn't playing for Barcelona, he would definitely be underrated too. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, all this, yeah like, that's, I mean, that's how I feel about it. Yeah. So, for me, I say Oblak. For sure. What does Rashid Nuhu do in his free time? Obviously, right now in the off season, you have a lot more time to yourself, more free time. Obviously, when when you were training, you were training game day. You only focus on game day. But what are you doing in your free time? What do you like to do? Any hobbies? Uh, I just my I love to watch TV. Honestly, <laughs> I, 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 I'm not gonna lie. I love to watch TV. Yeah, like I can watch TV all day and not step a foot outside. <laughs> Netflix? So, like, yeah, Netflix FIFA? all day. But, um, I actually stopped playing FIFA like, wow. since like senior year in college. Wow. So I was taking too much of my time. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. Like, so I, I gave up my Xbox. I was like, nah, I can't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. So, For sure. So right now in the off season, what is your daily routine? Like, like what does Rashid Nuhu do right now? I mean... As of right now, we're still training, but okay. when um, we're done with like training and all that, I'll just keep out being in shape, just like try to like work out maybe three or four times a week, because mm-hmm. um, obviously my body needs to rest too, but I can't mm-hmm. take every day off, so mm-hmm. I have to do something to just stay in shape and prepare for the next season, wherever I, like, I end up being. Yeah, for sure. And when do you get your vacation? Because obviously the, it's it's off season. And, and are you gonna go back to maybe Ghana and visit your family? Yeah, uh, I'm gonna go back to Ghana. It's been a long time. I've spent Christmas in Ghana, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. For sure. And if you were to have a, a dinner with a legendary goalkeeper, uh, who would it be with and why? Uh, a legend goalkeeper. I'll see if I understand. Any any specific reason? Maybe you you admired him growing up. Yeah, I really admired him growing up. I just, I honestly, like sometimes I just like watch like YouTube videos of him playing. Just yeah. he was just an amazing goalkeeper, and I just love like what he's even doing now, going from Manchester to Ajax and like all that. Like, yeah, it's amazing. Like, I just admired it, like who he is. Mm-hmm. For sure, and then obviously you you mentioned to us earlier that you you have a brother named Razak Nuhu, um, yes. but if you could talk to us about your brotherhood with him and and if in tough situations like you were in, do you speak to him about uh, about that so he can motivate you and, and stuff like that? Yeah, um, like when I got drafted, like I talked to him. Like, I mean, he doesn't know anything about like the MLS, like the US soccer. He's mm-hmm. more familiar with it. Yeah. But I talked to him about getting drafted and, you know, when you get drafted, you're not guaranteed, like... A contract. With a contract or mm-hmm. anything. So, yeah, I talked to him and he's like, hey, I mean, at least they're giving you a chance. Just go there, like, do your best. Yeah. See what happens. Mm-hmm. And 
like he made me believe like even if that doesn't like work out like it's definitely something somewhere else for me like, no, which just... i really appreciate it and, like and, like it kind of like freed my mind from like being like tense being like okay like if this team doesn't sign me then like i have nowhere else to go yeah like, he made me believe like there's definitely something somewhere like i shouldn't like pull all like my aim in like this team and like think when they don't drop like sign me it's over yeah so yeah, he really helped me. Like he's someone I've looked up to growing up. Yeah. Like he always like take me to like the soccer fields whenever. When like when I was young, like he literally whenever he's going to train, he'd be like, "Oh shit, come with me." Yeah. Yeah, we just I would just follow him around. Like we go like he trains, I train. Like he just like he's someone who like really helped me, and like I really like appreciate that from him. And mm -hmm. he's just a good big brother, you know. For sure, and then when yeah. when when your brother was in Manchester City, did did you ever ask him for an autograph or for a picture from a player when 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 he was at Manchester City? Uh, I mean, when he went to Manchester City, I was also here. Okay. Oh, for high school, so yeah. it was like tough, like to get stuff from him. Yeah. But like when I was when we were young at the Right to Dream Academy, he also like went over to train with Everton. Wow. And he, um, you know, Steven Pina, who yeah, was South Africa. Playing for Everton, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Steven Pina gave him his soccer cleat. Wow. And when he came back to Ghana, he gave that cleat to me. You still have them? Nah. You I used it. Okay. I, I mean, I had to use it. Yeah. <laughs> so I used it. And I, it's something like, I was like, remember, like, like wait when i was young i used to wear steven penis like <laughs> worn cleats like okay. it's like that amazing like yeah. like were they metal that would have, what is it were, were, were they metal cleats or no yeah yeah and i was like like if like, it was like those metal cleats like you could like, it's like so it's metal it's not it's soft ground but like you have to tighten them in yeah, yeah you screw them in yeah 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 like it's, it's those like was it like f50 f10 those mm -hmm. cleats like, yeah, yeah yeah wow yeah that was like a great experience like still till today i still think about that i'm like that was awesome like, yeah, for sure yeah. how many languages do you speak um well like in ghana we have like a lot of like different dialects yeah and i do speak about four of them wow yeah so so i'm, I'm imagining when you were in ghana did you already know english or did you have to learn it in ghana um, like schools in Ghana teach in English. Okay, was so, so, so that, it wasn't difficult. Yeah. yeah, it was difficult. Like if you didn't go to school, it's like tough to like pick up English. Okay, for sure. Yeah, so like if you go to school, like so like sometimes some schools like the high top schools, you just like here you speak in your local language, they actually punish you for it. Wow. Yeah, because they want you to like get good at speaking English, mm -hmm. but they always try to make every student speak English when they're in school. For sure. So yeah, if you don't go to school, it's like tough to like pick up English in Ghana. Yeah. Yeah. Could you give us a phrase in one of the dialects that you speak? Um, Medasi. You know what that means? No, no clue, no clue. I was just saying thank you. Okay. And then and then and then how do you pronounce it? Medasi. Metasi. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. And then obviously, um, you play in the in the USL right now. But what league mm -hmm. would you like to play in? Any league that attracts you? I mean, I would love to play in well, like in the way like my abilities take me. But honestly, I love the German league. I'm not. I love the German league. I just love the atmosphere out there. Like with the fans and all that, mm -hmm. I just love it. Like I just love like the German league. Yes, yeah, for sure. And then obviously Ghana plays against South Africa next week, and also against Southampton Principe. Will you watch these games? Are you a fan of Ghana? Oh yeah, I'm a fan of Ghana. I mean, like some of my friends play on the national team, so it's like something wow. like like I was like try to watch and. Mm -hmm. See how they do, you know. It's like, 
and that's the thing the beauty of like having friends that play like you all support each other like sure. which is great so i like to watch and watch my friends play and they play for my country too so yeah that's good to watch yeah for sure or is one of your dreams to play and represent the black stars um yes actually there's one kid that got called up uh his name is Mohamed Kudus he plays in the Danish league mm -hmm. yeah he's he just got called up I think he's actually he's 20 no he's probably like 19. wow yeah and yeah he's young mm -hmm. and he just called he just got like this is his first time getting called up with a full national team so he's really excited to be part of it mm -hmm. we'll see how he does yeah for sure but would you like to play for Ghana? Like, like, is that your dream too? Oh yeah, for sure. It is my dream, mm -hmm. and I'm just, I'm just hoping and praying for one day yeah. get called up. And for sure. See, yeah. And I'm, and, and I'm imagining that you probably ask tips from R R Razak because he always, if I'm not wrong, he has two caps under his belt with Ghana representing. Yes. Yeah. He. <laughs> it's like he's the unluckiest. Like playoff ever like interact their way with like injuries and like yeah. stuff like that like if he wasn't with injuries like he would have had so many like cops under his belt yeah he would have won the u20 world cup with ghana wow if it was, yeah like it's just crazy like how things didn't like go the way he wanted it just because of injuries and yeah i mean it's part of the world we're in with football so sadly yeah for sure what sacrifice, sacrifices have you had to do to get to where you are now? Possibly, you know, the big transition from Africa to here? Maybe one of them? Yes, that is... Um, I think my biggest sacrifice is just leaving my mom home. Like a single mom, you know? Like yeah. My brother my brother already left, like... And I, I, I had to leave too. And just leaving her by herself home was one of the biggest, like challenges i've ever like been through in life like yeah. it was just tough and when i got here i didn't even have a cell phone to call back home too like, wow. which was yeah it was tough like yeah that was the biggest challenge i've ever faced like honestly mm -hmm. was, yeah for sure and if you could talk to us about you know debuting for new york red bulls too how was that like were you nervous how did you approach the game uh, yeah, I mean, my debut was a tough game. We played Pittsburgh. Yeah. And honestly, yes, I was nervous because, I mean, it's my first professional game. Yeah, yeah. If, if I said I wasn't nervous, I will be lying. Like, yeah. I was nervous. And, I mean, going through a warm-up and everything, like, I started feeling myself, you know, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> watching the first, like, ball in the game. Like, I was like, all right, like, this is it like mm -hmm. it's my time like whatever just play like as good as i can mm -hmm. and yeah i mean that's what happened i mean I, we're like unfortunately like we lost that game and, yeah and it wasn't like the team we played was like terrible we actually played the team that won us like our conference mm -hmm. so it's like it's not like a team like like oh like this should be like an easy debut for me to like go like ease it up and like yeah. gain my like, confidence like i was throwing in like the fire like honestly like yeah so i think i held my own like to the expectations that i should but mm -hmm. unfortunately we like we lost and i mean it's part of the game i mean yeah yeah for sure and then to the various games that you've played could you name us the best save that you have had not even with red bulls probably with the university too do you remember a best save my best save. Probably a lot, right? I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like in college, yeah, I did have a lot, but I mean, my best like moments in college was, I think, was the uh, um, Sweet Sixteen against Duke. We went to penalty kicks, and I mean, I had to make. Uh, I think three saves wow. to like what win it. So yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that was um, definitely one of like my biggest highlights in college. Mm -hmm.
for sure. For sure, yeah. And like I had to take one PK too, and I didn't make it. Like, I, honestly, I think that game was yeah, that game was like my highlight, like for sure. Most definitely. And obviously, talking about PKs as a goalkeeper, do you prefer a clean sheet or saving a penalty kick? And if if you could tell us why. Clean sheet or saving a penalty kick? Mm -hmm. I just, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll go with clean sheet because, I mean, stats are stats, you know? Yeah. Keeping clean sheet is like, you look good. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can lose like 5-0 and save a PK and still lose 5-0, you know? Yeah, that's true. But uh, keeping a clean sheet is definitely something like every goal he wants. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Yeah. And then are you the type of goalkeeper, you know, to, to do research on the forwards from the opposing team to look videos up on them to to see like where the forwards naturally hit PKs. Are you the type of goalkeeper to do your research like that? Honestly, I hate watching videos <laughs> of people taking PKs. Yeah, because like you can watch someone take a PK and like they do change every time. They don't yeah. shoot in place, and mm -hmm. I just like to go with my instincts at at that moment, like what I feel like what he's gonna do. That's what like I like to do. I don't like to watch videos of them taking PKs prior to the game. Like, yeah, it just messes up with my head, and I just don't like it. Yeah, for sure. No. And then if you could talk to us about the number that you chose for New York Red Bulls and why, because if I'm not wrong, it's a pretty high number. Yeah, I mean, obviously um, they didn't want us having the same numbers as the first, first team okay. guys. So yeah, um, and I chose the 81 because um, I was really close to my grandma. Okay. And she passed away at the age of 81, so mm -hmm. I chose to have that number just to know like she's looking up on like looking down on me like yeah. you know, it's like it's good. For sure. And obviously in the locker room, do you think you could tell us the the player that probably has the worst fashion? The worst fashion? <laughs> <laughs> I swear I I'm gonna lie, we all like we got some swag on the team. Like I can't really see. Like <laughs> we all got some swag on the team. Honestly, yeah, like, yeah, for sure. Most definitely. How is yeah. it being Ghanaian? If you could describe us, you know about being from Ghana. How is that? Um, being from Ghana, like there's something like people don't know, like about. I mean, you know, unless you like, you really interact yourself with people from Ghana, mm -hmm. you like. And just like whenever I, like I introduce myself to someone and be like, oh yeah, I'm from Ghana, they're like, oh my god, like every Ghanaian like person I've, I've met, yeah. I like the sweetest people I've ever met, like stuff like that. I'm like, I mean, that's how we live. It's not like we're faking it. That's how we live in Ghana. We're like, we're happy. Like we appreciate what we have over there. Like mm -hmm. we we're content with what we have. Like we don't. Like, obviously, like, we do have, like, ambitions and, like, try to achieve more. But, like, yeah. the moment, like, where we are, like, the things we have, we appreciate that and just, like, live in the moment. Yeah. And, and you don't think, and, and you don't take anything for granted. Yeah, exactly. Like, mm -hmm. we don't, like, see things and, like, oh, like, like, this person is giving me days, so I'm just going to, like, hang around and take it. Like, you have to go out and and something for yourself too like, okay. that's how like we're taught growing up so we live by it every day so for sure and then obviously this champions league season right now i don't know who you support and there's been crazy games you know chelsea coming back tying against ajax but in your opinion who do you think will, will win the champions i don't want to talk about chelsea coming back that was <laughs> like the worst referee like ever i've ever seen yeah that's the worst referee ever mm -hmm. right I mean, like a team like Ajax, like I just love watching them play. Like, yeah, they're young. Like, they play like beautiful, like soccer. Like, yeah. I just love watching them play. And, like seeing them like getting robbed like that, it's, it's tough. It's just, it hurts. Mm -hmm. Like, but I mean, obviously, like, my team is Man City, and um, they tied though today. Yeah, I mean, tough. with the situation that we're in, yeah. yeah, having Kyle Walker playing in goal, like you know, like he said, we'll, the take, free we'll, kick. we'll take the draw. Yeah, <laughs> we'll take the draw, like you know, yeah, yeah. We'll take the draw, but for sure. I mean, I hope we actually hope like 
this year Man City do good in the Champions League. Like yeah. they've been a good team in Europe, but like they've always had it like had like fixtures like yeah. going out like playing Barcelona. Like any team that meets Barcelona, you know like what's gonna happen. You yeah. know like you play tough teams when you get on the group stage, it's tough. Yeah. But I hope this year is like a better year for City. Completely agree. And obviously, being a professional, if you could talk to us, you, you know about the the hardest thing about being a professional. <laughs> I think the hardest thing is, honestly, just like, like being focused as a professional. Because mm -hmm. you have so much time, you can easily get distracted doing things that like a, like a professional shouldn't be doing. Yeah. But, you know, just being focused like you know when oh like i do have training tomorrow i shouldn't stay out late i shouldn't like i mean obviously you want to like stay up hang out with friends or that but it gets to a point like you have to put yourself first yeah and that's the hardest thing to do as a professional putting yourself first because mm -hmm. sometimes because sometimes you, you start to like lose like friends because mm -hmm. like then you're being selfish and yeah. it's about about that it's just trying to like make sure you have a job like yeah. you know it's just it's life. Think, being focused but yeah it's, it's the toughest thing mm -hmm. yeah for sure and now in new jersey i'm imagining it's insanely cold you know probably snow already but how is that you know do you like the weather right now? Um, do you like going out in the snow? <laughs> um, I mean, when I came to America, I was in Connecticut. It was cold. Then I went to college in New York. It was cold. <laughs> and now I'm in New Jersey, which is cold too. So, yeah. I mean, I don't like the cold. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, everyone I talk to is like, yeah, you should be used to the cold. But now I'm like, no one is used to the cold. Like, it's cold, it's cold. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like, I, I, I don't like the cold. I don't, I don't like it. Do, does it snow in Accra? Huh. When it snows, I think Accra will shut down. <laughs> 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 I, I don't think, when it goes below 50 degrees, everyone is like, in their rooms, bro. Like, no one is going out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for sure, for yeah. sure. And then, obviously, Ghana um, didn't make, if I'm not wrong, they didn't make the World Cup last time. But what do you think uh, Ghana needs to do better to possibly maybe win the AFCON and, 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 and achieve the World Cup like they have uh, before? Because, obviously, you know, they have Kevin Prince, Asamo, Atsu, and many different mm -hmm. players, Mensa, Aful. But what do you think they, they have to do to, to get to the next stage? Um, honestly, I think the reason why we like we didn't make it the World Cup and like we actually like on a down like side right now is because like it's kind of like a rebuilding year. True, very like, true. Those players like ACN, Kevin Prince, watching like um, Suleiman Tari, like yeah. all these big players. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like to replace those players. Like it's, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like it's kind of like a rebuilding like like place right now for Ghana mm -hmm. and I I mean we do have talents like oh, Ghana we do have talent it's just just with the experience those players had and like we just can't we just can't have them, uh, like yeah with every player so it's tough to replace and I mean with time I'm pretty sure we'll replace that but, like with actually getting more experience playing in the EPO yeah the are you brothers playing in England like yeah we definitely get in more experience and like so yeah I think we will definitely come up soon and people will be surprised for sure <laughs> for sure uh, to finalize the interview Rashid um, if you could talk to us about you know having uh, a compatriota how you say in Spanish um, a, fa a, a guy from the same country Roy Boateng obviously born in Ghana as well but if you could talk to us about you know okay. Having a, a fellow countryman on the same team, you know, do you guys are you guys close camaraderie? Do you guys go out together? Uh, I mean, like we kind of have different interests, honestly, because mm -hmm. um, he didn't really grow up. Like he left Ghana when he was eight. Okay. So yeah, so like I mean, he still like speaks the language. Like yeah. he doesn't speak it really like. He understands the world, but he doesn't speak it that well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, like I do, like he's. I mean, I do, we talk a lot, like 
we talked about like going back to Ghana together or something like being in a crowd together during the break and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we used to live in the same place like during like preseason and all that. And wow. Yeah, I mean, we're like, we close. Yeah. For sure. Well, thank you so much, obviously, Rashid, you know, for taking your time out of your day. Well, I think, if I'm not wrong, we're three hours in difference in time. But, you know, I, I want to mm-hmm. take you. Thank you. And I wish you the best of luck. Hopefully, we will see you representing the Black Stars for Ghana, hopefully soon. And hopefully, we, you know, we could probably see you, if not in Europe, or, 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 or succeeding in the MLS, you know. So, I wish you the best of luck and, and God bless. Thank you, Ara. Thank you. For sure. Thank you for watching my video. If you guys could share it with your family members and friends, that would be much appreciated. To all the people around the world who watch my videos, thank you so much. If you could like and subscribe to my channel, I would love that a lot. Until next time, thank you.